Hello guys and welcome back to another game review. Today I will be reviewing Star Wars Battlefront 2. I will not be reviewing the multiplayer because I will only review the story modes in each game I review. And this video today will contain spoilers for the plot. Anyways, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was tested on the Xbox One X and played on easy mode. The plotline centers around a character named Iden Versio and her squad named Inferno. The main storyline was a bit hard to follow, and the storyline was also very predictable and got very dry in some places. You start in the side of the Empire, two missions take place before the Death Star blows up, and then the story continues after that. After about five missions, the main character decides to go against her orders and become a traitor of the Empire. She did not agree with what she was told to do. The rest of the game is just you doing certain tasks for the Rebel Alliance. After the main storyline is finished, there are three more missions you can complete called Resurrection, and this takes place side by side with The Force Awakens. You play as many different characters like Han Solo, Lando Calrissian, Kylo Ren, and Princess Leia Organa, and Luke Skywalker. The music in this game is, of course, very well done, as is all Star Wars music. It fits perfectly in with the missions that you are doing and adds a sense of excitement to the gameplay that would otherwise not be as great. The sound effects are very well done and it really makes you feel like you're in the Star Wars universe. The voice actors acting is very well done. Sometimes the main character sounds like he's yelling during gameplay and can be sometimes very distracting. I also noticed sometimes when shooting the blaster rifles, it sounded a bit muffled. I think the only way this can be fixed is by restarting the game. Otherwise, the game, otherwise the sound is very balanced and can be kept, kept at a very manageable volume. The graphics are very well done, especially if you have an Xbox One X. You have the option for 4K HDR at 60fps. The reflections are very well done and looks very real when on certain maps. Everything is very clear and you don't notice any pixelation in anything. The graphics in the cutscenes are different than in the actual gameplay and can be noticed very easily in certain situations. The cutscenes look like they were actually filmed in real life and the facial animations are very, very well done. The background of the maps are very well done and look like they can be very easily accessible, but are not, but it adds a good sense of world. The controls are very well done. It took no time at all to get used to the controls. You can also change many things from what buttons do what and how sensitive they are as well. The content was pretty straightforward and very lackluster. There were crates that were on all of the maps, and at first they seemed like they were all hidden, but they actually weren't hidden, and you were always meant to find them. In easy mode, there were in easy mode, which I played in, there were customization options for abilities, but I found myself not using any of them. There are no side quests, just main story missions, and the missions are usually very short. After finishing the entire game, it took me only about 5 hours to complete. I would play this game again, but only to enjoy the graphics and the gameplay. Not for the story or anything, because the story is very bland to me. The game was a lot of fun. I enjoyed killing a lot of the stormtroopers and rebels. The missions where you fly in a starfighter were especially fun, since you can make cool maneuvers with the starships. If you were looking for more fun, I would suggest playing multiplayer instead of the story. I like the game a lot, but there are many complaints that I have, and I will list them here. A lot of the complaints I have are story complaints. The first problem I had was, was I thought the entire game would be from the perspective of the Empire, and the first few missions were great because you played as an Imperial soldier. But then the main character just decides to join the Rebel Alliance 
And that frustrated me because I like playing as the Empire, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. I also did not like how the Rebel Alliance trusted Aiden so easily without even questioning her. I also didn't like the fact that Aiden was so full of herself and was pretending like she's always been with the Rebel Alliance. They let her keep her rank of commander even though she had not proven herself to them. To me, there felt like there were no consequences to any of the main character's actions. For instance, there was one mission where Aiden's daughter's ship was shot down. I fully expected her to be dead, but at the last minute she suddenly survived. To me, it was not believable, and she had survived that kind of crash. There was no way she could have survived that kind of crash. The last complaint I have is the ending of the game. When all was one with no warning, we see that the main character was shot twice, and when the, within 30 seconds, she died. I did not like this part, because we were never given signs of her feeling fatigued or like she was injured. But anyways, with every review I do, I will give a rating of the game out of 100. For Star Wars Battlefront 2, I give it a 70 out of 100. I'm giving this game this rating because it was a lot of fun playing the game itself. And it was cool playing as many of the heroes that you have seen in the films. To me personally, the story matters a lot. And to me, the story was very lackluster and very, very short. If you're expecting a very long game, then you might be disappointed. Otherwise, the graphics were great, the music was great, and just general gameplay was nice to have. So that is the end of today's review. I will be back soon with another game, hopefully next week. Thanks for watching, and see you all later.